to Taha to begin his talk. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you enjoy the event. Uh, how are you? I'm Sayyid Tahavi, and uh, I'm Sayyid Tahavi, and uh, I'm a Flutter enthusiast, just like all of you who are uh, present here. And uh, I love making mobile apps, and I'm currently employed at uh, Venture Lab. So let's begin with our session. So today we we will be talking about uh, the three most popular archi architectural patterns that are being uh, followed when developing a Flutter uh, application. So they are namely scope model, block, provider, and we will be having an up close look at them and uh, see how they are uh, being how they can be implemented in a Flutter application. So when I say point blank figuratively, it means that they uh, without any explanation. So this is exactly what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I will just jump right into how uh, these three patterns can be uh, implemented in your Flutter application rather than uh, beating about the bush and talking about uh, some stuff that uh, that I that I'm seeing elsewhere uh, that why it's important and how. Uh, we can manage the uh, state of the large scale applications rather than talking about the actual thing that is the implementation. How can a developer uh, achieve this thing? So today my focus would be that on how it can be done rather than uh, why and when. All right. So uh, let's begin. Uh, scope model. Let's begin with the scope model. Um, it's one of the uh, three approaches, and uh, what it basically does, it pass uh, it aids you in pass the data model from parent widget down to its descendants, and secondly, uh, then it updates the children when the model gets updated. Uh, in my opinion, uh, it's uh, uh, the simplest of the three approaches that we will be talking about today. So uh, let's let's talk about how it's implemented. So all of you uh, uh, must have at least once uh, seen this code uh, if you have ever developed a Flutter app or uh, tried practicing with it. So it's basically their Hello World app or the demo code that's like created when you create a new Flutter project. And what what they, uh, uh, like the technique they use here uh, for uh, state management, you can say like when this button, this floating action button gets pressed, and then the value of this variable here counter will get uh, will get updated or incremented, and then uh, this set uh, state method, this thing will be called, which will update the UI. So the rule here is in this uh, uh, simpler but effective method is that the state is maintained by the parent because a widget can only be rebuilt from their build method. So you can see that in the declarative style of programming. Uh, there's a widget uh, widget hierarchy, a tree of widgets being uh, called, which uh, form up to build, make up your UI. And if this text uh, is a child of this uh, home page, all right. So this counter variable exists in the home page uh, widget itself, and which is the parent of the uh, this text widget. And so this state is maintained by at least uh, by a parent that is at least one level up in the hierarchy. So this is the general rule here. Uh, OK. So for uh, OK, let's talk about uh, the main classes in the scope model. Uh, this uh, what the main classes that the scope model library brings. The, they are namely these three, model, scope model, and the uh, scope model descendant. Uh, their names are uh, quite self-explanatory, but let me uh, tell you what the model model is basically uh, a class that uh, actually implements the listenable principles that uh, some consumer can subscribe to it and and then you can uh, wrap this model inside a scope model to pass it down to the descendants so then like subscribe to it and then the scope model descendant it will automatically rebuild itself when a change is notified by the model so <clears throat> okay, so um, let's see. Uh, let's directly uh, get into a code uh, here, and uh, I'll give you a walkthrough while explaining how these uh, classes and the uh, how a score model is implemented. So, uh, as as you have seen this uh, counter application, the 
demo code uh, we will see how uh, this this thing can be implemented by a scope model so it will be easier for you to understand all right so i have uh, some examples here and i will be walking you uh, walking you through these so let me open them and run them okay so this is a scope model example of a counter app let me run it it's launching so meanwhile it's launching let me walk you through walk you through so it's the same example we have our class widget here it says stateless and then and when we uh, like go down we see this scope model widget being uh, being used that we talked about earlier uh, what it basically does it like uh, it wraps around this uh, model we want to pass down to all the descendants and makes this model that we have passed to it to all the descendants that are now uh, that will now be uh, in the widget hierarchy in all the widget group. so then uh, we have our app here it's a simple app so we have just kept this whole model here and then uh, if you see the uh, counter model uh, implementation so it's basically uh, the properties are this properties are this counter variable which you will need uh, to update that's uh, once the floating action burden is pressed and uh, if you notice uh, here in this increment method uh, there's this notify listeners being called so this is one of the essential uh, methods that is required here in this case which will actually uh, notify all the descendants to update their states once we perform some uh, some uh, manipulation with the data like here we are going to the variable so if you go down here, this is our home page. And if you if you notice, it's uh, stateless now, unlike the map. So because because of the architecture that we have just implemented, and and if you go down here, then uh, the third widget that we talked about is here, the scope model descendant. It actually basically helps you to find the model that you want to use. And there are uh, two ways to do that. Uh, let's first talk about this, then I'll explain the other one. So here you uh, like uh, so tell in the generic in what uh, model you want to consume, and that model has been passed down by the scope model here. Here, all right. So we can uh, use its property like we are using its counter value uh, to show it in the text. And then if you see here in the floating action button. I'm using this another convention. It's the scope model dot of static method that is also used to find the model and like, uh, but it has uh, it has one uh, advantage over uh, this method. It, this method always rebuild its uh, children whenever uh, the uh, change is notified to it. But in here we can toggle if we want to. Uh, like we build the widget when the state is updated or we just want to use the values from the uh, model or from the state like in in here we just want to use this method we don't want to uh, update or rebuild this uh, floating action button but uh, in case you want to use this uh, notation here and it's uh, it's helpful uh, when we are using uh, multiple uh, when we are consuming multiple scope models inside one widget I, i'll demonstrate that too but uh, first, check out this property, uh, rebuild on change. So if we set it to true, uh, just like in this scope model descendant, this thing will also rebuild uh, when a change is notified. But in this case, when we haven't specified it, uh, we are just consuming this uh, value from the model. All right, so the app has uh, run itself. And when we press this button, it's behaved as expected. So I, I was telling you about when, uh, when you want to consume, uh, like this was just one model that we have passed down and we were consuming it. But what if we wanted uh, this text widget to consume uh, value from another model uh, that is not this counter model, that is something else. Uh, for our use case, for the sim sake of simplicity, uh, let's duplicate this model, all right? So if I duplicate it and name it like counter model two, now I, I initialize it with a different value here. And now I want to consume it. So I want it to uh, be consumed here in this text widget. So let me use a string interpolation rather than this syntax. So, it's, so it can accommodate two values from two different models. We will be using these dollar symbol. 
All right, so this is the value from the first one, and this is the value from the second one. All right, so I will be using this notation as I explained you, and instead of counter at increment, I will be using this counter value from the uh, counter model two. All right, but uh, we have to pass this counter model two from the scope model, so we will have to add it here. So if you want to add more scope models, like we will just wrap it in another scope model and then pass it there. Same model we want to use counter model two. All right, so here we have uh, two different uh, models being passed to this one text widget. And uh, basically, if you if you see it, so this, this value is from the uh, model one and this value is being shown from the model two. We haven't like implemented its increment method yet in, in the floating action button. So it won't actually increment when we uh, press this button, but you, you get the idea and you, you also get uh, how this notation can be helpful when utilizing um, when utilizing different um, uh, multiple models in a single project. All right, so uh, this, as, as you have familiarized yourself with the fundamentals, and uh, so let's uh, dive into a more practical uh, example of SCO model that is, uh, that will more like more, uh, better explain you how, uh, that will better explain you how the SCO model is actually useful in real scenarios. So I have this one more example here. Okay, let me open it for you. And it's basically a name change application. It's also very simple, but uh, it demonstrates uh, the more uh, real power of implementing these kind of architectures, architectures in our application. So, uh, all right, let's begin. Uh, let's first launch. Okay, so here you can see that we have our model in a separate folder and separate file. It's up to you to. So, like how you modelize your and how you organize your directory structure. We could have done this uh, the same way for the counter app, but to keep it simple, it was here. So if you like look into this user model, we have a name here and we have a property of closing it. And then we have a method that will uh, like change uh, whenever this method is called, that will change this value to a new value and then notify all the listeners or, or the descendants of the scope model. So basically, <coughs> what our app will be doing, uh, yeah, it will have two pages, and one page will be showing this thing, and then another page will update uh, this name uh, based on whatever the user inputs in the text field. So let, let it quickly uh, execute so I can walk, uh, like do the demo of the application and then walk through the code. So here in the main.r file, it's, uh, it's like it's starting just the same as the, as all the apps. So here we are, here we have our app, we are passing it our user model. And then this user model is uh, like the wrap, this user model is wrapped with the scope model. So this is scope model allow all the descendants to use this model. And then we have this. Uh, all right so this is our home page it's also stateless here and, <coughs> and it's also stateless here and we are pushing a new page from it okay the app has run itself so you can see that the, the name we have in the model is being shown here and when you press this button it will navigate you to our new page where this uh, text field has the same uh, label as that name and the model and you can update it let me update uh, it to some other name. Okay, so when I change it, and you can see that was, the snack bar is using the same updated state from the model. This label is also using the updated state from the model. And when you go back to the page, the same thing has been updated. So it was really convenient for this uh, architecture to uh, do all this uh, rather than the conventional side state uh, way. That we, uh, all right, so that's look into the code so here here if you can see that uh, we are using this again this scope model descendant that is 
uh, like populating their text field with the uh, value from the model and then on the next page that is the change name page we have it's actually stateful just to cater the user input and uh, the all the values from the model like uh, when we are uh, all the values from the model are being handled by the scope model and only the user input by hand is hand being handled by the set state here. So if you see in the set state, when the user submits, we just remove the text. So uh, in here, as you can see, this descendant has uh, multiple children's, like uh, it has this uh, name controller, then it has this raise button, and then it has this uh, snack bar and all of these are using uh, the model like all three of these are using the model like one is for you using the model value for in the snack bar the other is for the text field label and thirdly the uh all right so so uh, as you can see that using this architecture all of these uh, architectures we can like simultaneously share the state between uh, different widgets and uh, it's, it's very seamless for us so let's close it and move it to the uh, next one all right so where's our next presentation okay so next is the provider so provider uh, is another approach of like uh, it's basically doing the same thing it, it also allows you to create listen and dispose a value or an object and the main objective here is the same that is creating separation of concern by using dependency injection like uh, basically uh, moving the business logic out of the out of the view all right so but how it's implemented it's a bit different but uh, the concepts or the fundamentals are the same and you, you will get to know it uh, when we store walk through the example okay so uh, and uh, to let you know this is the officially documented uh, architecture on flutter website like this is the only architecture that is uh, documented on their website and it's, and they uh, like say it's specially made to handle the widgets and the passing of data between them and it's uh, it's made uh, by combining most popular approaches so you will see uh, familiarities with what what we already explored and what we are about to uh, see so the main concepts here in uh, provider uh, are basically uh, there are three things uh, they are notified then there are providers and then there are consumers so uh, the the names are pretty self-explanatory uh, notifier is something that you can subscribe to for uh, and it notifies you of changes and then provider uh, provides the instance of a notifier to its descendants and just like uh, what we have already seen and then finally uh, the consumer we can access the state using the consumer all right so come wrap once again so let's see how the same application can be implemented using the uh, provider uh, approach all right so let me first close these windows all right and then let me launch in this uh, provider example here. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, and you can, uh, as I walk you through the code, you can also see the familiarities. But uh, here we are launching. Okay. Okay, so here we are uh, like launching our main app here and then you can notice that change notified provider is being used and uh, there are uh, several kind uh, types of providers, but uh, what you need to focus on is basically that there are providers and each provider has some different functionality, but the essence is the same. So here is this, uh, the change notified provider which, which actually notifies the change. Then there is this simple provider which doesn't notify the thing and you can just consume the value and then there is proxy provider and and several others so to keep it simple uh, let's call it provider we have this provider here and it's basically allowing this counter model to be consumed by all uh, any descendant that wants to consume it in our 
my app. All right, uh, so the counter model is the same here. It, it, it has this value uh, variable and then this increment method, which also notifies the listener just like in the scope model. So here, uh, our app, once again, is just stateless and uh, it basically implements a simple uh, app widget and here we have our homepage. So uh, in our homepage, what's different actually, uh, like here, instead of instead of what, what we were using in scope model, do you remember, we were using this scope model widget. But here, uh, instead we are using this, change provider so they are basically doing the same thing so okay and then uh, secondly uh, to how uh, consume it we have this consumer widget here which uh, like which has a generic just like you specify in the generic which model you want to consume or which notifier you want to consume so this index is goes like this it has a builder method which uh, builds the uh, ui for the app and uh, actually, let me uh, explain also, maybe some of you have questions what, what are these parameters in the build method. So basically this is the model and this is the context we mark. And this is the child widget that, uh, this is the constant child widget, uh, which I haven't passed it yet. But if you like pass it some constant child widget, it will uh, not be rebuilt in the state, uh, when the state gets updated. So if you have, like if you want to use some widget inside uh, inside here that you don't want to rebuild when the state gets updated, so you pass it this constant child. All right, so everything else uh, is the same fundamentally. Like we have consumer instead of instead of what instead of scope model descendants. All right, and then then we have this notifier, and then lastly lastly we have this provider. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, the, just like uh, before, we also have this uh, notation here with this, which is provider of, which lets you directly call the value from the model. And we can set the listenable to false here, just like in the scope model, we were uh, says, like setting the boolean to just like. <clears throat> all right so uh, let me run the application is basically the same uh, just as you have seen we have implemented the same functionality using the uh, provider widgets the, like the widgets that are uh, provided in the uh, flutter provider package and you like register these dependencies here you register this flutter dependency here, just like you to register the scope model here. And lastly, you will be registering a block dependency here. So, so far we have uh, seen examples of two, two architectures that are namely scope model and provider. Okay, there's one significant difference between them, which like actually, uh, like when, when I you when I was like uh, had to make this decision which one to use for my app. I went for the provider just for this one major difference. Uh, otherwise, I found uh, the scope model very, very easy uh, to be implemented because it it keeps the number of classes or number of widgets limited. Uh, so it's easier to understand. All right, so the key difference of what I, what I found was this. In scope model, when we wanted to, when a single widget wanted to consume multiple models, what we had to do, we had to like uh, nest our uh, widget in multiple scope model widgets, just like these, like this is one model we want to pass down to the descendants, and this is another model that we want to pass down to the descendants, all right? So, uh, but the major difference uh, in the syntax of the, uh, provider here is it lets you uh, define multi providers like it lets you uh, give an array or define an array where you can define different providers which can then be consumed by the uh, several descendants there are and as you can see there are different types of providers so you can read about them on your own all right so this was the <coughs> like major uh, difference that uh, 
like this it reduces also the lines of code and also increases readability and uh, I, I think this is the better approach to take rather than this but uh, all right so uh, let's move on so we have seen uh, these two approaches and now lastly we will be talking about block okay what's so special about block is uh, actually uh, it is it recently like recently in this month it has uh, become more popular the repository on github has begun more popularity than the Flutter itself like can you believe it like uh, this architecture has been is being implemented by so many because it has all the goodness of uh, the reactive programming or the reactive mobile app framework that are now very popular in react native and uh, there we have this rx in android so uh, this is like this sums up all the goodness of these okay it's not like the way that we don't have redux in uh, flutter but uh, what's gaining more popularity like this is the better uh, uh, package that like lets you uh, implement uh, reactive mobile frameworks and Man, let's like manage the architecture there. All right, so block attempts to make uh, basically attempts to make the state changes predictable, build complex app by composing them of smaller components. So let's see what the core components concepts are here. So they are namely, the, and now the uh, as you can see that uh, things are getting complex. So don't don't get uh, afraid. Okay, the, when I will explain, you will find it very similar to what you have already seen and uh essentially easier to implement okay so we have uh, these uh, core concepts here there are events basically events are inputs to a block you can say and then we have states states are the output of a block and then we have transitions uh transitions are they change from one state the change from one state uh, to another is called a transition and a transition consists of the current state the event and the next state so basically when you are like making the transition you have these properties available and you if you want to do something uh, in between that so you can do that and then uh, we have uh, streams so like in the uh, uh, reactive programming uh, fundamentals you must have the know-how of streams and let me explain you very briefly you can assume it to be a water pipe and it has water flowing through it and you are like uh, you have taps uh, at the end of it to like you are subscribed to that water stream so basically in uh, uh, computer science uh, terminology it's a sequence of asynchronous data that you can subscribe to and like get updated when the uh, data gets updated or right, and lastly blocks so what are blocks blocks are uh, business logic components it's their full forms and it's a component which converts a stream of incoming events to <coughs> stream of incoming events to a stream of outgoing states so basically uh, Events, as you know, like we just discussed, that they may be triggered by a press of a button or life cycle events, and so, and states uh, will get uh, updated as we have seen that incremented uh, counter variable. And so, so these were the uh, main core concepts, and uh, these are the main classes that this library brings along with it, and they are namely uh, block provider, block builder, and the block. And you may know, uh, notice now you may now starting to uh, notice the similarities here all right okay so okay okay stop sharing for the counter app okay <laughs> this is the last thing okay seriously last thing so here's uh, another example of a counter app being implemented via block so let me open it All right, and let me run it. While it's running, let me walk you through the code. Uh, and I'm assuming that you are easily able to see this code. All right. Okay, so uh, it's we have, okay. Let's talk about this uh, block dedicate first. It's, um, uh, it's a handy, it's a handy concept. But
uh, it's a heavy concept but uh, <coughs> okay my my throat, throat is getting really dry and uh, as you, this is the first uh, Ramadan, so like yeah uh, not really used to it so all right bear, bear with me so simple block dedicate uh, we have <coughs> Uh, th th this is basically not doing anything here, but just to like uh, uh, let you know about the syntax and the functionality. Uh, like uh, that it's exposed. Let me walk you through it. Uh, we have this block delegate class here, which we can extend in our uh, Dart class here. So what what this block delegate uh, class brings along it basically lets you override the on transition, on event, and on error methods. And uh, what it, it basically lets you achieve is that. Uh, for every transaction, the transition that takes place uh, in your application that has the block architecture implemented, you can write some functionality here that that will be executed each time a transition is being made, or each time an event gets triggered, you can write some functionality here. It's basically doing nothing here; it's just printing the uh, details of the event or the uh, transition here, and then calling the uh, super, which is basically do whatever you want. Uh, so, but you can implement this simple block delegate like this, which which is a very uh, handy uh, thing uh, when you have it in your application. It, you will come across scenarios when you will be using it. So, when you define this simple block delegate, uh, we have uh, this block supervisor here, and you can pass it uh, this delegate to him, so your app will know like what to do when these events and these transition or these errors occur so now back to our application here let's first uh, it's launch let's first uh, demo it so okay well, it's a bit more um it has a bit more functionality than the other counter apps we have seen and that's good i, I like i'm it's refreshing for me to see at least three more buttons. So here they are here they have basically implemented this uh, one more even for the decrement instead of the increment. So you can also decrement the counter value here. And then we have this button which can toggle between the dark and light themes. I'll like walk you through the code and how it's uh, like how the uh, it is implemented uh, in the block architecture. And lastly, this button will throw a uh, exception and and this uh, and you you will get to see like how we are uh, handling the exception via block architecture so here it throws this uh, exception so let's work line by line okay we have we are done with this block delegate and now as we talked about these classes here uh, the block provider the block and the block builder so here we have this block provider which basically, like, uh, just like what we have seen, it uh, passed down a block for builder or uh, to be consumed. And then this block can be consumed uh, in the descendants or the children. All right. So then we have this block builder. And uh, if you, uh, like, if I decrypt this syntax for you, it basically says that this is the block and this is the state of the block that we will be using inside this builder method to build a widget like it will be using the block or the business logic inside it and the current state of the block and using that and to build the widget so what actually this block is made up of let's first dive into that so this theme block here okay so you may notice that we have this enum which basically has just this one value toggle and then we have this uh, theme block here, uh, which is implementing the logic to toggle between the light and dark themes. So there are two methods that are being overridden. overridden. One is this initial state, and uh, another one is this map even to state, like we talk about. And if you decrypt this syntax, it basically say what? Uh, that a block uh, converts this input event into this output state or output that hour you can say like it converts this input theme even which is basically a toggle and gives out a theme data all right so initially we set this theme data to light theme and then uh, based on whatever when the toggle event is received uh, we uh, like call this method and it uh, lets you toggle between the dark and light themes based on this like it 
a simple ter ternary operator check. If it's dark, change it to light. If it's light, change it to dark. And then uh, you, the state, which means basically notify all the block builders uh, that we saw above. All right. <clears throat> so this was our theme block, uh, which had this business logic. And then uh, this block was being consumed by this uh, block provider here. OK, and then uh, uh, and then we further uh, go down here. So it's calling this home page. And then we have another block provider here, which is providing this uh, counter block to the uh, rest of the uh, descendants. And we have this, uh, now, now we have this counter page here. Uh, on this counter page, as we have seen, we have uh, three functionality, four functionalities. So we will be uh, like seeing how how the events will be triggered for these functionalities and how the block builder will be consuming those events. So <coughs> first, this block builder that's consuming the uh, uh, counter block, and this is uh, the current state of it. Like what's value, uh, what value it has. So first, let's dive into the. Uh, counter block implementation or it's implementing so the counter block here uh, is implementing uh, this uh, these two methods uh, which are basically uh, based uh, like let's update the state based on these uh, counter events that we have defined so it takes in this event and then churns out this uh, in state based on this event so initially the state is zero it's an integer it's zero and uh, here, when we map the event to state, if the event was a decrement, then we decrement uh, with minus one. And if the, uh, and then if we have this plus one, right? So uh, then if we have this increment, then we plus one. And lastly, if you see by default, it throws an exception. So if uh, any other uh, event is received, it throws an exception. So let's see how any other event is received, how decrement event is received, or how increment event is received. We just saw how the counter block implements the functionality. Now how we will see how it's being consumed. So <clears throat> all right, so we have our floating action buttons here, and we, ha we have four of them. The first one uh, uses the counter consumes the counter block like this, like it calls the counter block. I want to call this block, and then triggers an event for even for this by calling this add method, and it let know it lets know the uh, block how which event it wants to trigger. So we are uh, like uh, triggering this increment event, and the and then the rest is handled by the block. It. If the increment uh, uh, event is triggered, you know what happens. It it gets, uh, it increments the thing, and then the block provider, uh, the block builder that we have seen above, uh, implement like uh, uses that value which got implement incremented and then displays on the UI. And same is for the decrement event here. The uh, second floating action button actually invokes the decrement event. And uh, lastly, skip this one. And lastly, when we return null, the counter block throws the exception, which we just saw. And for this theme thing, we just trigger this toggle event. So which means it, uh, that it will uh, toggle between the light and dark themes. So this basically explains uh, uh, all the fundamentals of the uh, three most popular approaches that are being used in the uh, Flutter application development nowadays. And let me know uh, if you want more clarity on any of these concepts uh, by the end of the session when we when we begin our q a and q and a and save your questions for that and post them in the uh, comments uh, when we uh, begin the q and a so if you like comment them they may get lost so save them for the end and i hope you must have learned a thing or two from this all right, uh, let me show you a few things before I sign off. OK, so here are the credits for for the examples I just showed you. I haven't, I haven't ordered these examples. So the, the, I have uh, like posted the links for the rightful owners who have these, who are maintaining these repositories. And they are uh, these uh, slides will be shared with you when, I, when I'm done with the 
uh, presentation i think on the description or in the comments of the youtube and you can like uh, like go on these links and see for yourself lastly you can connect with flutter karachi by following these links we are on facebook we are on slack and twitter and you are on youtube at the moment uh, in slack we uh, this is a more uh, uh, like focused group where we tackle uh, flutter related issues for the community like community members uh, help out each other um, and there are several channels like job posting journal announcements and uh, dev problems and then this facebook page uh, uh, keeps you updated to our latest happenings and thank you so much all right uh, okay next week kamran uh, will be coming up uh, to give us talk